This video will cover network peering. We'll simplify what network peering is, describe what exactly is a network, and how does data flow through it. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't, and let's get this episode started. The internet isn't just one big network. It's actually a series of multiple networks combined together. At its core, a network is made up of two or more connected computers which can share resources like printers and other devices in your home. In 1970, the internet was structured as a cluster of computers, seen here, which were usually just different colleges with connected computers. So there was one cluster of computers here and another over here. What made them a network was when we created a wired connection so that the computers here could talk to the computers here. So what is network peering? Well, to put it simply, network peering is the exchange of internet traffic between different networks. The peering aspect here is a method used by companies that allows two different networks to connect and exchange traffic directly without having to pay a third party to carry the traffic. So how is data exchanged through network peering? What started out as physical metal wires, stretching from Texas to Philadelphia, for example, is morphing into more efficient mediums like fiber optic cables or even interconnected low orbit satellites that transfer data through the air. Like when you send an email to someone, you're really sending tiny packets of information. The way it works is, let's say the email is one megabyte in size. When you press send, then the email is broken up into tiny packets of information, which we call data. When it reaches the destination, then it's all put back together. The same thing goes for large movie files that you watch offline. It's split up, it's sent, and then it's put back together when it reaches its destination. So why are companies giving data to each other? The primary advantages of this sort of direct interconnection are cost, latency, and bandwidth. Peering keeps traffic local by identifying the fastest and most direct route. Let's take a look at this chart. Notice how the network peering is structured. Internet service providers, or ISPs, are the companies that deliver this data through internet exchange points, or IXPs, which are the physical exchange points usually housed in large buildings. So in this chart, the bubble on the top is an ISP. Let's say that the bubbles in the middle represent the Philadelphia IXPs, and this bubble on the bottom would be you and I accessing data through their network. There used to be a master provider that acted as the middleman, but the two providers came up with an agreement and they decided, hey, we could just cut out the middleman and work with each other for free. So now when customer one wants to talk to customer two, they have to go through the internet service provider and the IXP. They do not use a middleman to pass this traffic. So it's simply leasing an open port and the traffic just flows freely. And since you now have direct connection, this also improves the reliability of your network by eliminating a possible point of failure. Then there's distribution of traffic. With this method, the ability to scale improves because you're distributing traffic over many different networks instead of one master provider that acts as a single hub. And the traffic gets divided into many different destinations. So now that we know what peering is and why it's used, let's talk about the four main types of peering. One, you have public peering. This uses an internet exchange or IXP. This option is the most popular and usually is more efficient for companies. Some of the largest IXPs in the world might span many physical building locations across a city. And then you have private peering. The advantage of this is that when a large quantity of data needs to be exchanged, because most of today's private peering arrangements occur at shared location buildings, private peering interconnections make up most of the traffic on the internet, especially between the largest networks. Okay, so the third one is you have partial peering. And this is also called regional peering. This network traffic is only exchanged in one isolated area of the globe. And finally, you have paid peering. This is also called partial transit. This entails for one network to pay the other network to participate in the arrangement. So where and how do networks peer with each other? Well, individual networks can find dozens or even hundreds of other networks that want to peer with them. The more exchange points that a peer provider has, then the more valuable that they become. It's sort of like critical mass, where the most popular ones become more popular because they're already so popular. You can even use a website like PeeringDB to find local peers. In fact, let's do that right now. I'll type in Philadelphia, since that's where I'm located, and there we go. Here's a list of exchange points close to me. 
You can see their contact info, peers present, peer in politics, type of bandwidth, and the address of the IXPs that they used. So to recap, one, network peering is simply just an exchange of network traffic between two established networks. Two, internet service providers and broadband providers are sort of interchangeable in today's terminology. ISP refers to the company and broadband is the speed of internet that those companies provide. Since broadband is currently the standard, then an internet provider and broadband provider are sort of interchangeable. And three, IXPs work with companies all around the world. They connect internet traffic from Italy to the United States and from South Korea to Japan. And if you use an IXP, leave a comment below and let me know which one. And that's it. Send data through your local peer network by clicking that subscribe button below. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.